Okay, in this video, excuse me, in this video, we are going to be talking about proportions. So before we do anything, we need to know, um, well, what is a proportion? And a proportion is just, it's an equation, and it's an, an equation because it has an equal sign in it, and it just states that two ratios are equal to each other. So we need to know that it is an equation and two ratios are equal. So if you want to determine whether a pair of ratios forms a proportion, you need to check their cross products. So if A over B equals C over D, so here's one proportion set equal to another one, one ratio set equal to another one, checking cross proportions means cross products. So then A, D, equals C times B. So that's an easy way to check proportions. So if I wanna see if these guys are proportional to each other, I would multiply six times 20, and is six times 20 equal to five times 24? That's how I would decide if these are cross product, if these are equal. So six times 20 is 120, five times 24 is 120, so yes, these guys are proportional because when I multiply them across, it checks out. So same thing, is nine times 42 equal to seven times 54? Well, nine times 45 is 378, seven times 54 is 378, so yes, these guys are proportional. Okay, all right, let's check number five. Is 15 times 56 equal to the product of 42 times 20? 15 times 56 is 840, 42 times 20 is 840. So yes, these are proportions. Okay, same thing. Is 0.5 times 40 equal to 18 times 1.5? Well, half of 40 is 20, and 18 times 1.5 is 27, so these are not. So no, they do not form a proportion. Okay, all right. Now here's if we want to solve a proportion. So now we checked if it is a proportion here, I want to solve for x. So that means then that 12 times x, which is 12x, I'm gonna set that equal to 16 times three. And 16 times three is 48. So now we just do what we do to solve for x. We divide both sides by 12 and x equals four. Okay, and you can always go back and plug in X for four and see, is 12 times four 48? Yes, 16 times three is 48, so it checks out. Okay, let's look at number 11. Same thing, W5. Now, how do we write W5? Five times W, there's only one way to write it, coefficient in front, and I'm gonna set that equal to 26 times six. And I know somebody's gonna ask me, well, does it matter if I do 26 times six first and then five times W? Commutative property says it does not matter the order in which you multiply. Symmetric property says it doesn't matter if you put five W equals to 26 times six or 26 times six equal to five W. It doesn't matter, okay? So five W equals 156 and divide both sides by five. So W equals 31 and, well, it's 31.2, okay? All right, let's turn the page and let's see. So that's how we do these. One more I'm gonna do up here and then we'll get to the challenging ones, but really not too challenging for you guys. So here on 17, again, I can set this up any way I want and I'm gonna do 4X times 15 and I'm gonna set that equal to 84 times five. And four times 15, or four X times 16 is 60 X. And 84 times five is 420. And of course, I'm just gonna divide both sides by 60. And X equals seven. And that's my answer. So this just goes back to basic um, how to solve equations. So here's a hint. When you have this, we call this a challenge, but not a challenge for you guys. So here's a, ratio and I need to find out what X is over here. When you see this binomial, two terms that can't be combined, the first thing I'm gonna do is put parentheses around it. 
That tells me that now I have to use the distributive property because I'm multiplying three times all of it, times x minus two, and I'm setting that equal to two times 12, which is 24. Now I know that I need to distribute, and now I can solve. Add six on both sides, three x equals 30, x then equals 10. And it's the same thing here. I'm gonna put parentheses around my binomials. Again, it doesn't matter in which I do the order. So it's five times r plus six, and I set that equal to 10 times r minus one. So when I distribute, I get five r plus 30 equals 10 r minus 10. I'm gonna bring my variable terms to the left because that's just kind of what I do. You guys know how to do this. Subtract 30, subtract 30 negative 5r equals negative 40, and when I divide both sides by negative 5, I get r equals a positive 8 is my answer, okay? So if you're struggling, come see me, um, and if not, good luck.